Yo, what's good? It's your boy Ted. So right now we're in my boy Tony's warehouse right now. Um, again, this section we're talking about shipping, but I really felt like it would be more impactful for me to take you guys into a warehouse of a person who's been doing major numbers every single month with his clothing brand and show you guys the entire process of fulfillment and shipping out your orders to make it easier for you on your path to greatness with your clothing brand. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Yo, what's Hello, good, huh? boy, you good? Yes, sir. That's Yo, what's up? my boy Tony. Got the course in here, man. What's up, uh, Tony, can you give him a quick introduction of who you are? Right now? Yeah. Okay, cool. My name is Tony Smith, y'all. I'm the owner of a brand called Historically Black Apparel right here in Atlanta, Georgia. We handle all of our fulfillment and shipping in house. So I want to take y'all on a quick, if I can. Oh, yeah. You Let's know what I'm saying? Take on a quick little tour of what goes down in the day in the life of somebody running an e commerce business. Get it. So this is the warehouse, 5,000 square feet right here. It wasn't always like this. We used to do pretty much all of our printing. Now we're kind of in a mix of it where we're doing print on demand and ordering stuff or whatever. So we print some of our stuff on the heat press, but a lot of it comes from like overseas, like right. Pakistan, China, all of that. Mm -hmm. But just to show you, um, it's really important that you have like organization, right? Mm -hmm. Because shipping and speed kind of go hand in hand, facts, right? Facts. You always got to have both of them to go so that your shippers, when you're hiring people, they can get stuff out quick, mm -hmm. but then the customers can get stuff quicker, right? Right. So we've got everything um, pretty much in its own box, but what also helped me out personally, I don't know if this will help your students out, we put small through large on one side, mm -hmm. XL through 3X on the other side, and that just helps the shipper like cut down on some of the options right. or whatever. But then once we grab something, so say, you know, I grab this right here. Right. I got a shipping station set up. Okay. So over here, this is pretty much where everything goes out. So we use a software. Um, I don't know if you talked about it in the course, but it's called ShipStation. Yep, we already went over. Okay, you already went over. So ShipStation makes everything super easy because it just integrates with your Shopify or any other platform that you're using. Right. All of your orders come in there. They literally print out, and what you can also do, which I'll tell you a little bit later, we'll touch more on it, you can schedule pickups inside of ShipStation. Yep. Or you can do it on the USPS website as well, but people shouldn't be like driving to the post office. That's right, a waste exactly. of time, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So in the course right here, pretty much what we do, um, I mean, when shipping out, using ShipStation, it's gonna show us our orders that we have, how many days that that order is, this order is actually already shipped, but let me find something a little bit more recent. So right here, 34 hours ago, somebody ordered one of my t-shirts. It shows their address, where it's shipping to. I can email them. And all I really have to do, because it's connected to a stamps.com account, which gives you discounted pricing too Thanks. on USPS. So I'll come in here. Y'all see that order just shipped while we were talking super quick. And then once I hit print, it's gonna give me the label. Mm -hmm super simple all i'm gonna do is literally hit print and then we see it coming out right here so what are some of the top resources and equipment needed for shipping for a beginner in yeah. the clothing brand space so for a beginner the, the things that you're going to need is your poly bags which i'll put this in okay so, so what, we'll do that what is a poly bag if you what's a poly bag with that so i actually get these off of amazon right so okay. what's cool about amazon you know you can get anything but Starting out, you may not have, you know, the investment to get like your logo printed on it, yeah. but you can get like black, white, pink, you know, different designs, something that matches with your brand. Right. So I just did the black bag so they look different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I get 200 of them for like $17 on Amazon. Super cheap, right? So then what you would do is this is my 10 by 13. So if I'm shipping just a t-shirt mm -hmm. or two t-shirts, I'll put them in this bag right here. Right. I use three different size bags, 10 by 13, then I got 14 and a half by 19. Yep. So I'm gonna put like a hoodie in here. Cause I really don't like to use boxes right. unless I have to use boxes. They take up too much space. Yep. And then my last size, if I'm shipping like multiple jackets or like 25 shirts, mm -hmm. 24 by 24 bag. You can put a lot of shirts in here, right? Perfect. So to kind of walk you through that, I'm literally just gonna take hoodie. We're gonna use that middle size bag. Mm -hmm in there as such right another little tip that you guys can do is order like some flyers yeah you know what i'm saying vista print where, where, where would you recommend yours because i usually get mine from vista print yeah so vista print is good prima flyers mm. 
Um, and that's pretty much who I use as well. Okay. And then you want to put a flyer in there. One, it helps your branding out, right? Absolutely. Reminds them of who they ordered from. But then it's customer retention, right? Yep. Because you want to bring them back. So put like a little coupon on there. So I got like a little 15% off code. And then I call it like I'm back 15, just so I can track if right. it's working. So I'll throw that on the inside. I throw my print slip. My print and slip on the inside, which is their receipt. Peel, fold, and then simply I do this. But people are probably wondering different printers, right? Right. So yes, you need your labels, you need your poly bag, uh, your software, which is ShipStation. But let's talk about printers. So when it comes to shipping, you're gonna need a thermal label printer. What's funny was I was working with the brand mm -hmm. and they were doing like huge numbers. They were still printing stuff off on their home printer, right? <sighs> wasting time, spending more money on paper, yep. all that type of stuff, taping it there. You don't need to do that, it's wasting time. Mm -hmm. So here's three different printers that I use in my business and I'm gonna break down all the differences. You've got the Zebra printers, which is gonna be more industrial. So FedEx is using these and um, UPS is using all those. Right. I personally like them just because they're strong, but they are more costly. They're about like $500. So gotcha. when you're starting out, you may not wanna spend that on that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But then you've got the Rolo printer, which is really popular. Yep, that's you know my what favorite. Saying? That's the one I recommended to y'all. Yep, so the Rolo printer. It's more of a fan label printer, so the way, what I mean by that, side right here. oh yeah, on the side, what I mean by that is you literally just fold your labels through here, flat lay, and they print out, versus the Zebra over here, you just put the rolls in. So, it really just depends, but there's really no real pros and cons to it. Right. But then you also got this one, which is the same as a Rolo. Mm -hmm. It's just like kind of an off brand. It's a little bit cheaper on Amazon. So it really just depends, you know, like where the student is at. Yeah. But the Rolo is definitely a great printer. I would probably recommend that okay. as well. You know what I'm saying? The Rolo printer. So, so uh, you would recommend the Rolo for a beginner just now starting. Mm -hmm. um, again, guys, you guys can go grab this from Amazon. I highly recommend that you grab the paper that goes with it. So they do send you rolls. But if you buy the Rolo, it'll have an additional one where you have a stack of paper. You guys can utilize that stack, right? Um, on top of that, it's very, very essential for you guys to have multiple shipping rates. So when Tony comes back over, we'll talk a little bit about the shipping rates as well, because it is very important. But again, in the beginning, you don't need no high depth, you know, uh, super expensive things, right? You need a regular computer. You need to get you a Rollo label printer so you don't spend money on exactly just like this, right? So this is the what the paper will come in. If we open it up, literally, this is probably about a 500 to 1,000 uh, sheets of, uh, of shipping labels, right? So Tony, real quick. How important is it to have uh, multiple shipping rates um, on your website? Because yeah. it does help a little bit with profit and you know making up mm -hmm. some losses. So how important is it for you and how many do you have if you could give out a couple? Of yeah, so that's a great question because it really depends on your operation, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're making your products kind of like I'm doing, right. it's difficult to offer like next day shipping, right. you know what I'm saying? But if you've got you know a bulletproof, solid shipping infrastructure you have inventory the product sitting there you could actually upsell by charging like same day before a certain time or next day shipping but starting out i would just offer a flat rate so see what the average is to cost for, you know for your shipping and then offer like a flat rate but still have multiple so when you were saying multiple right yeah because you've got first class mail which yeah. is going to be about a t-shirt or two mm -hmm. but then when you're shipping out jackets that weigh over a pound because after 15.99 ounces, it goes up to priority. Right. So anything over a pound, that's gonna cost you a little bit more. So factor that rate in. And a, a hack that you guys can use on Shopify is you can set it up by either over a certain price or over a certain rate, it only shows them that option. Exactly. So when you're plugging in your product, say for instance, you know they're ordering jackets and you put in a pound, right. it won't even show them first class right. to let them purchase that and then you take the L, so make sure you set those weights up. Gotcha. Yeah. So how important is it to actually weigh all of the products? Mm -hmm. Because again, when it comes to shipping rates and if you guys don't know that, a lot of the rates that you get and a lot of what you're gonna pay is based off of the weight itself and mm -hmm. where it's going in the country. So how important is it to actually weigh it? And yeah. when you weigh it, what do you do with the, the weight and the amounts? What do you do, like where do you put it and things like that? Right, right, right. So weighing is super important because um, if you're shipping stuff underweight, there's two things that can happen. If you have an account, USPS is gonna charge it 
so you'll either see like a negative in your account or yep. just see the balance being lower or they'll actually send it back to you and mm -hmm. say not enough weight right so you're losing time if you don't do it the right way mm -hmm. but once you weigh it you could just get like a weight scale off of amazon as well you literally in your shopify when you're creating your product in the variant option you're literally just going to put the weight there and it'll automatically transfer that to your ship station and calculate how many products they have in the way and then what you can even do is create like these automations so it picks the correct service as well perfect mm -hmm. so also one real quick tip as well you guys can literally go to walmart get your kitchen scale literally go weigh all of your products and take that motherfucker back all right so if you don't want to you know hey i mean we got to be convenient we got to make sure we're saving money but if you do want to keep it again you're going to be dropping products consistently so you might want to keep it but if you're a person your pockets is a little bit tighter i completely understand nothing wrong with keeping that receipt and taking it back so with that all being said um when you guys are shipping things out how do you deal with an influx of orders mm -hmm. like if you have a day when you drop and you do let's say 200 300 orders mm -hmm. how do you guys keep up with shipping everything out and making sure things go out on time yeah so i mean that's kind of like it's really just all different depends on your process right so if we've got inventory of that item mm -hmm. it's gonna fly out quicker it's just your employees is gonna have more hours you know what i'm saying right but then where you can like mess up with it and i think it's always good to be transparent mm -hmm. is when you do do a big drop and you do pre-sale or whatever you should probably also let your customers know when it's going to ship exactly. right so if most stuff ships like within like three to five business days if you do like a pre-sale drop just put on here like we got a hundred in stock but they don't start shipping till this tuesday with the date right that buys you that time mm -hmm. because what we don't want is chargebacks exactly. you know what i'm saying so really it's just transparency that's what i would say with that okay dope mm -hmm. now would you say there's any other tips or resources that you would highly recommend to a beginner in the clothing brand space as far as you know fulfilling orders the right way shipping mm -hmm. like if somebody's starting off in their basement what tips would you give them for that process yeah so for that process if you're beginning probably what i would just say is the biggest thing is and i'm gonna get to this starting the right way because what i always tell people who are starting is don't start with bad habits yeah it's facts. hard to break the bad habits right so literally just get yourself on a schedule so like once you have your order in make sure you're like okay i'm always going to ship on these certain days if not every day from a certain time frame mm -hmm. because you want the consistency to build of your orders going out so gotcha. that people come back and keep shopping with you you don't want to create bad habits of like i only got two orders mm -hmm. so i'm not going to give it that love because i only got two orders right you got to treat that first order like you got a hundred orders gotcha. you know what i'm saying so yeah dope man guys you guys got a lot of gems again as you guys can see it's an entire warehouse that he has right now so again i want to give you a personal thank you but also oh, yeah. i want to plug you with the audience where can mm -hmm. they find you on instagram yeah um as far as courses what courses do you provide mm -hmm. and then where can they shop with your brand as well got you got you so like you said y'all i'm tony smith you can find me on instagram right here on the screen at tuned in tony and then if you want to shop with me you can shop historically black apparel and then for any services or courses I got, just click the link in the bio and you get to the Instagram. Hey, so there y'all go, man. Y'all just got a full direct walkthrough inside of a warehouse, yes, literally seeing the entire process of how it's supposed to go. So with all that being said, that wraps up this section. Let's go ahead and jump into the next section of the course.